I, I have a couple of sons as well, and a number of years ago, and they're both studying computer science, which is great. And my oldest one got his job all, all on his own. I was happy about that. And a little while ago, I had one of those nice little paydays. You know, sometimes your startup does well, and you get a nice little payday. And I overheard my younger son talking to another friend, and he's, he looked at me, he looked at his friend, and he said, you know, if she could do it, <laughs> And it's like, my kid is, you know, I think he respects his mom, but he kind of thought, well, if she could do it, then I could do it too. So here's my journey. And what I want to talk about is that in almost every single one of the positions I've had, even just coming out of business school and working at Clorox, I focused on women. Women are really the market. And today I want to talk about the importance of embracing the female consumer and not apologizing for it. Because you'll see, and I think you've heard a little bit from Shaw Rose and uh, Kara, it's a really big market. So I did brand marketing at Clorox. I did a little bit of direct marketing at AAA. That was 1994. I saw the internet for the first time. And I joined a company called Electric Classifieds. The idea was to get classified market on the internet. And I ran Match.com. So it's Valentine's Day. Any of you met somebody on Match.com, had a date of one kind or another? OK, good. It's good to bring love to the planet, you know? It's a lot of fun. And um, then I went to women.com after we sold Match for way too little, bluelight.com, which was Kmart and uh, Yahoo. Then I went to Trustee, which is all about privacy and safety and building trust. Women really care about that. I'm still at Trustee as chair, but I'm advising a bunch of women-led startups, including Bia, who is here, one of the finalists today. Cheryl, you're out there somewhere. <laughs> Great. Solo Mo, which is mobile in stores. Eye Capture, which is really interesting. You'll be able to take your phone, open up a magazine, take a picture of the magazine, and have it populated with ideas, uh, links, and where to buy the stuff. I can tell you she's having a hard time. A lot of the VCs don't quite get it. Who opens up a magazine and tears out a page or takes a picture? Well, women do it all the time, right? <laughs> And then Mae Brooks is trying to find jobs for women on maternity or coming back from maternity leave or staying home. So I'll, I, I advise some other male-led companies, and that's a lot of fun, too. I'm also working with Stanford Women on Boards who's trying to address the issue of getting more women on boards, and it's tough. So that's kind of my journey. I want to talk a little bit more about Match. Well, first of all, I want to say again, embrace the female consumer. And we did this. 20 years ago, I hate to admit it because it ages me, but in 1995, I had a Washington Post uh, editorial that basically pointed out that women were less than 10% of the internet. Now, that doesn't seem that long ago. It's actually not quite 20 years, but we've come a long way. Now we're really nearly at parity. Even then, back in 1995, we decided that the way to Vault, Match.com, to be the number one dating site, and honestly, is around this time of year, we decided to focus on attracting women. Now, that sounds funny. Why wouldn't you want to attract men to a dating site? Well, basically, we found out that personals and online, well, there really weren't any online dating sites, but personals and, and were populated mostly by men. And many of the newspapers, do any of you remember 900 numbers? OK? That's the way personals worked. What they would do is they'd make fake ads from women saying, I want a gangbang. And obviously, that would generate a lot of phone calls. But that wasn't really the experience that was really leading to uh, relationships and dating and love. So, <laughs> so we decided to focus on women. And that meant, well, it wasn't just going to be pink, although it did look kind of cute. But we put a real big emphasis on safety and anonymity, which was important, especially then. It's gone now. And fun. And it meant that we did things a little bit different. So for example, one time the engineers, mostly guys, all guys really, one, the head engineer said, well, how are we going to ask the weight question? You know, how, what, what are the pound break, breakdowns? And, <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, you've got to be kidding. We're not asking the weight question. We could do height, but we're going to go with body type, you know, athletic, slender, robust, Rubenesque, what have you. <laughs> 
And that's what we did. And it worked. I mean, I think Match from the very beginning really uh, distinguished itself because we really attracted women and men knew it and of course it did very well. So I, we talked about this. Uh, the latest stats I have is women are certainly dominating the social web. Uh, from Pinterest, 82%, no surprise. Facebook, about 60%, Twitter, and so on. So this is very much a big market and this is what they're doing. But on top of that, women are shoppers and buyers. 50% of the internet, but 60% of the buyers, 61% of the transactions, and 58% of the dollars. And that should turn heads, right? In terms of categories, women are actually leading in many of the top ones. You see their toys and hobbies, accessories, clothes, music books. But given that it's Valentine's Day, I'll point out that apparently men lead on flowers, greetings, and gifts. So I hope this works out for you today. <laughs> so 75% of the buying power, pretty much no matter where you look, all the stats say women are three quarters of the purchasing power. Um, and that's very much in the US, but I think it's going the same way internationally. Apparently in the US, it's about $5 trillion. The, these stats come from She Economy, Look at the subhead, a guy's guide to marketing to women. That's great. So 93% of food, uh, drugs, vacations, but look at the big numbers even with uh, cars and PCs. So this is a big market, you don't wanna ignore it. So that's the second lesson. Go out and get her. And what I mean is not just target her, but understand her. Uh, understand she's social. I think we all know it. You probably are all very social. We're very social today. It's all about being social. And the stats really support that. And these are the sites that she's going to. Photos is mostly a woman's thing, for example. But the other thing that women are very much going online to, and we studied this a lot at women.com, and that was in the late 90s. I don't think it's changed too much except for the social web has happened. She's trying to find ways to get things done, to be more efficient, to make things happen. And they seem to be very motivated to save time and money. So if you consider that, what you have to do is not think of women as one large market, but obviously there's very many segments. Again, at women.com we had groups called pillars and explorers and believers. What you need to consider is who are you targeting in terms of where they are in the stage of their life, their age, how many children, how old their children are, their attitudes and location, and so much more. And you've just got to make sure that you understand because she feels misunderstood. She feels misunderstood when she buys a car. She feels misunderstood at the bank that many times she doesn't get the respect that she needs. And many times, and you've seen companies do this, I think Dell this, did this a number of years ago, they just try to make it pink. Well, you know, that might sell some things, especially to teenagers and so on, but it really is not the answer. You've got to listen and learn deliver the value, solve the problem. When I, again, I think about women, uh, Match.com, way back when, the team, and it was a sausage fest. In fact, I'd say the meetings were something like, uh, mine is bigger, as they went around the table. Then they'd come to me. And we were going to charge, the idea was, they wanted to charge women and men 10 cents per email to connect on Match.com. And I had just left AAA where probably 75% of you are AAA members. And I was like, no, no, no. Women do not want to be nickeled and dimed. This needs to be a membership. This needs to be a place that's fun and safe and good to be in. And that's what we did. It's still the pro predominant um, billing model on the internet. Did you guys see this picture? Everybody's on their smartphone before the inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going mobile. And, uh, you know, there's the Who song, right? Um, right now, almost more women are on, have iPads or tablets than uh, men, percentage-wise. And we're not quite up there on uh, smartphones, but certainly it's moving that direction. And, of course, in gaming, it's social, too. So keep that in mind. Social, social. And they're looking for value. I have some, you know... I think this really represents opportunities. Women may not be doing as many things with their smartphone as men, but look at the, the one where women index higher. It's, it's coupons. I got my Bed Bath & Beyond coupon the other day. I was thrilled. 
I took this picture in Chennai, India. I was uh, in one of those cabs. If you've ever been to India, it's honk honk all around. But look at those two women. They're sitting there and one of them is uh, obviously on one of her smartphones. So she is global and I think Shah Rose talked a little bit about that. Um, this again represents opportunity. We still have uh, internet populations that have yet to have parity with men. It's going to happen. It's happening very quickly. How many of you have heard about this book or read this book? Okay, so I, I'm not sure it's titled great. It's called The End of Men, The Rise of Women, but it really outlines the effects of most colleges being 60% female graduates. Do you realize that? That means that there's a class of a, of a thousand. It's 600 women, 400 men. 60, 40 maybe sounds even, but 600 women, 400 men, that's not even. And it's having a profound effect on many, many industries, and she outlines things like pharmaceuticals and nursing. And these are industries that probably men could be welcome to, but they're becoming, or staying, certainly in nursing, very, very female. The point is, is that the women who you're targeting are very much you. You guys rock. You're starting businesses, you're making things happen, and you're joining 8.3 million women before you who have started businesses. Um, the stats are something like five, at least a business a day, or 550 women own businesses each day. I don't know how much that is on a per minute basis, and maybe some will be started here today. And of course, it's important to recognize that the, the employment is nearly 8 million people. So it is a very good thing, not just for you, but for our economy, for the US, to employ people and make jobs and make things happen. So kudos to you. But there is still a disconnect. And we've talked about this already. Women are only 8% of venture-backed founders, 11% of venture partners, 15% of angel investors, and 9% of board members. And, and that is worse than the US as a whole, which is only 16%. And you should know that only 12% of boards, public boards, only 12% have one woman on them, even though women represent the largest market. Boo, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of things you hear people say about women, what women can do about this. And there's a lot of efforts, and I don't, th I think many times it's because men are much better at reaching a hand and pulling up other men with them. You know what I'm saying? They hire other guys who they know, and those guys hire other guys, and we've got to start to do this. So a few things to think about doing. First, you are women, the market is women, use your advantage, think about that market, go after it, don't apologize for going after it. Going after the women's market's a big market, and you can do it. Help one another. Um, Shar Rose, what's your phrase, give and, give and get? By helping other people, you create a virtuous cycle where they will help you, and then you'll play it forward, and you'll help other people, and that can be really powerful, and the men have been doing that for a long time. Do that with one another. Do that with men, too. Do the deal. Take it a step further. Think to yourself. I have a good friend. We have something called the Purse Club. It started out when she was interviewing for the personals job at Yahoo, and she talked about the personals as the inventory. I said, no, Anna, you cannot go in there and talk about personal ads as inventory. These are people looking for love. <laughs> I think that helped. Anyway, she got the job and she bought me a purse. A few years later, she helped me with the introduction when I was taking trustee from nonprofit to for profit. She introduced me to Teresa at Excel, and Teresa ended up being my first investor, and I bought Anna a purse. So the kind of the idea is give a, a purse is something feminine, we all need it and it doesn't matter what size you are. So that's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> find male champions, especially if you want to do things like go on boards or be a CEO. You're not going to get it by relying entirely right now this year on women alone. That might change 10 years from now. But right now, you have to find male champions, and they're out there. Um, invest in yourself. One of the things I learned early in my career is I failed to ask for help. I failed to maybe get an executive coach. 
I failed to really kind of figure out what's going on. And I sold Match.com way too little for way too early, and it really hurt, right? Ten years later, I switched trustee from nonprofit to for profit. It was really good for me financially, but the way it happened is I was willing to take the risk, I was willing to ask for help. I basically had to quit um, to get the nonprofit board to understand that they had to do this, and I was willing to take that kind of uh, brinkmanship. And you aren't able to do that if you don't have the resources within yourself, your confidence, the time, rest, sleep. Um, support from your family and your friends, but if you have those things, you can really take some risk and you can really push the envelope, and I encourage you to do that, but that means you have to invest in yourself, and women often were the last ones to take care of ourselves, right? So you've got to do it. I also want to say one thing, and, and this was inspired by Cheryl Kelland, who's here from BIA, and I've had a number of companies who are going after things uh, trying to raise capital. And they've come back with the investor, the venture firm saying, you know, we just don't get it. And it's such bullshit. <laughs> I mean, honest to God. <laughs> How many of you have heard they just don't get it? I can't see. Make some noise. Okay. That's got to end. So if you're an investor out here, Look, we're not saying that you have to just invest in a women's thing just because it's a women's thing. But if she has traction, if she has customers, if she has, if she has followers or whatever the, the sales, if she has sales, then maybe you don't get it and write the check anyway, right? <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up. Here's, here's some of the companies that I've been involved with as an advisor. And I'm very excited that Cheryl's here, Ruby Ribbon does shapewear um, and basically built into your t-shirt, your pants, your leggings and so on, so it's kind of good. Uh, iCapture does the one having to do with the, uh, the magazines and Solomo is mobile offers in the store. So there's a few more and I look forward to spending the day with you. Thank you. Um, there's two uh, mics. It was really good to ask questions. You really should. That's one of the first things actually anybody should be taught in life is to ask questions. Um, so there's some mics, I don't, where are they? Right in the middle. Right there and right there. I will, I will force people to ask questions if you do not ask them. So right there, th why don't we go to a mic or we'll bring one back. <laughs> go to the mic. Go to the mic. Why doesn't it call the Michelle? Go to the is it, Michelle. Is it on? Hello. I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> testing. One, two, Go three, ahead. testing. I don't want to take too much time. So when you say invest in yourself, I want to take that as another level. Uh, I have a business. I've been in business for 12 years, and it's like one of those, we want to expand and do something different, product-oriented. We're right now in services. So I have always been told, I was part of Venture One and a bunch of other garage.com or whatever, don't invest in yourself. Use someone else's money. So how do you feel about the balance or ratio of the money you put in for capital versus what you're trying to achieve from other people? Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I just, I just buy vacation home, and I use entirely other people's money, so that's a great thing. <laughs> um, you know, you've got, I talked to some women last night, and you've got to decide what your objectives are. I, I think right now, for most entrepreneurs using your own money to at least get started, to get to the point that you could get that A raise, I think it's a must do. And I think it indicates to the market and to your customers and potential investors how much you believe in it. I do believe there's a limit, and I think it's difficult for some people to give up when they don't see the traction and the momentum that they want. And uh, I, th I think that's the way to go. But to the extent that you could use other people's money, do it. Okay. We have another question? Yep, right yeah, here. so um, you mentioned, I think, four times that you sold Match too early. Why did you, and um, so, what so was the trigger? Match.com was a, a, a division of a company called Electric Classifieds, which you've never heard of, right? 
And Electric Classifieds and the board of Match of Electric Classifieds, which owned Match.com, they were trying to break into the enterprise newspaper classified business. And Match was only supposed to be a proof of concept. And frankly, the guys were like this about personals. They didn't get brand, they didn't get community, they didn't get that things were really changing. And in fact, I had to run Match.com in its first three years, cash flow positive, which we did. I mean, that's kind of amazing. So I wasn't in charge. Uh, my big mistake was I could have probably been part of the group to buy it. And I didn't have the support that I needed to make that happen. Why not? I was exhausted. I was beat up at Match. They always wanted me to be putting the money to the other things. Um, my husband at the time uh, wasn't very supportive. My two children were very young, and I didn't learn. I didn't know to ask for help. Interesting. Okay. Let's, there was one. So we sold it for seven million dollars. Can you believe that? So we are a little over time, so we're going to cut off here. But we will have questions after every speaker. So if you have your questions, write them down, keep them in mind, and come and find me so that we I have, have you on the Q and A. Okay, I have one quick question. What's with that haircut outfit thing? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Sean Rose. Let me yeah. just say, <laughs> yeah. I like what you got going on now. Yeah, thank you. It's working well for you. <laughs> okay.